So I've worked on this thing so many times that people have asked me what, what were these for and I couldn't really tell them because whoever had it before put them in but now I think I figured it out. They're to put your nuts and bolts in because you work on it so much, you've got a place for them. So anyways, taking this out again, the battery box trying to get at the spark plug that's here. The one up front's easy to get at. This is the one that's a pain. I'm gonna see if I can heat this and mold this thing back. Cause it's in the way. That's just the uh, exhaust duct for the uh, for the clutch box. Just has an open end at the bottom and it goes up and around. Just so you can you can go into the water to about here. That's it. But uh, it vents up. That's the bottom of it there. The rubber. So. I'm going to take the box off. I put new plugs. Plug. Bleh, bleh, bleh. I put new spark plug caps on. And either they're not connecting properly or something else is the issue. I heard there was a, a bus bar issue back here on a connector. But that would cause more electrical issues as far as I'm concerned, but who knows. Um, so anyways, I'm going to take the battery box back out and see if we can get at that uh, spark plug cap, make sure it's in there right. And the fun continues. I don't know. Well, spring is so far delayed, so <laughs> it's been cold and that's, we got the, I got the uh, heater on now, it's noisy here, but so got a little bit of time, but not much. Oh yeah, if you didn't notice, <laughs> I put the box on, which I'm probably going to have to take off again. I didn't make it easy to take off, but because I didn't think we'd be having to dig into this again. So, that is another issue. It looks good, but don't run good. And the amount of issues that I've seen on the 2005 Kawasaki Brute Force 750... I would never buy one again. I'm really surprised because I had a 2008 650 and it was awesome. Never had an issue with it for nine years. But every 2005 now I've seen, which is a few, all kinds of issues. Issues, issues, issues. So we'll see if we can get this thing going. I don't know. you can see in here is that air duct I was talking about there's the spark plug cap so it's kind of a pain to get at I can't tell if it's pushed all the way down I think it is but we're gonna see if we can maybe force that over a bit just give me a little bit more room because in order to take this off you have to take the air box totally out sides off it's a pain. Got to make things a little bit easier. Okay, heat gun. Well, it doesn't really matter if I mess this up too much. I don't have a lot of room to move, but... I mean, like I said, this is just the exhaust coming out of the, the belt case there. So I don't know if this is possible to do, but... Things we have to come up with to work on these stupid machines.
And just to mention, if you ever sink these things or flood them, and you got to put it up on the end and get to this plug, <laughs> good luck. It's a tough one. This would make it so much easier too. I don't know why they couldn't reroute this somewhere else or move it up front, spin it around, have it up front or something, but somebody wasn't thinking. Okay, I somewhat uh, heated it up. I'm just trying to mold it over further and let it cool, but I don't know if it's going to stay there. It looks like it will. Give me a little bit more room and it's not going to affect the exhaust very much on the, on the clutch case. Still going to have the same amount of air moving through it. But you can see the spark plug cap way better now. Alright, you can see the cap a bit better now. So, this is my own little thing, so I wouldn't copy me just in case, but I'm, uh, I'm tired of trying to get at tight stuff there. Easier when you can get at it. That makes it a little easier. I don't think it's going to affect anything, but uh, don't do this unless you're like me and don't care. It's obviously been connected. There's a, inside the cap, there's a little, almost like a little screw sticking up. And you crank that in and it goes in against the wires here. So I cut the insulation back a little bit. So it makes sure that it makes contact with the wires. And it looks like it was working the way it was supposed to. These caps are ridiculously expensive. By the time you're finished, they're like 40 bucks a cap. Just for that plastic piece. Ridiculous. Okay, see if I can make sure that it's down. I can get at it better now, at least anyways. I'll check the front one, make sure. Okay, see the front cap easy to get at and I'll just make sure that that one's connected properly pretty sure it was so we might be tracing down some other issue okay now I know that I put them on right and this little tab back on the wire Those spark plug caps were on properly. I didn't think I put them on wrong. So something else is causing an issue. We're gonna have to take a look at that uh, connector right here. I already got the battery off, so. Well, I guess we're gonna have to take the back off, unless I can Bend it up or something. We'll have a look. It's back over here. And who knows? With everything else that's been messed with with this machine, maybe this is already done. See the harness in there? I don't see any connector though. I do not see a connector. So unless the connector is further up or this has been done already. You never know with this machine, that's for sure.
That harness definitely looks like it's been re-taped up. So I'm thinking somebody's played with it. I don't see any other connector anywhere. I'll have to wait till the, the experts get here. I don't like playing with electrical harnesses. That fix that I did on the this plug seems to be holding up. Doesn't look like it's come apart. Oh boy. We're having fun now. From the other side. I don't see any other connector in there that would cause any concern. Not a main connector anyways. So we'll have to wait for the expert to get here. Alright, the professional is here. <laughs> Use that word lightly. <laughs> <laughs> Only in the sense that he's paid. <laughs> With beer. <laughs> With beer, yeah. Well, since I changed the plug caps out, it's running even worse, so I'm not sure why, but how's that for new brute force POS? You want to crank it over just for a second there, Rob? Those get power from the wonderful junction back here. So they took the connector out and they just... You twist all the same colored wires together, solder them. Mm -hmm. And that fixed the problem. So somebody's played with that too. Somebody's played with every single thing on this whole... Well, they didn't find the one up front. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but the one up front is fine. The one up front is fine. This typically was the one that rotted out. Yeah. For whatever reason. Hmm. So we're checking the uh, crank sensor. Uh, one way to check it is with the ohm meter. Uh, another way to check it is with a lap scope pack. You see the signal is putting out. So if you crank it over, we're tied into, we unplugged the crank sensor, so we're reading directly right. off the sensor. Right. Got a heartbeat. It's got a heartbeat, exactly. So uh, it's a good stable signal. So we know the crank sensor is putting out the signal to the CDI box. Too bad the rest of the bike's not stable. So uh, onward, we're playing with uh, intermittent, no spark. And uh, it's kind of leading uh, us towards possibly a failed CDI box. Um, yeah, I was going to buy a new one anyway, so. That's where we're at right now. As long as that plug is working properly. Yeah. So we're checking out um, the CDI box to to finally confirm that it has failed. Uh, so this is a lab scope. 
And what I'm measuring is the voltage that the CDI is blasting the coil with to create the spark. So it should be consistent um, voltage being sent to the coil to fire the coil. And what you will see here in our two second uh, time frame is uh, very inconsistent voltage being sent to the coil. So uh, it, it's another indication that the CDI has failed. So Rob will crank it over there for four or five seconds. Okay, so as you can see, it's very inconsistent in the voltages being sent to the CDI. Uh, some CDIs can send up to 400 volts. I'm not quite sure on this one. My max range on this is uh, 125 volts, but we can uh, see it's not consistent. Uh, so that probably dictates some of our uh, issues that we're having with this uh, piece of shit brute force.